This is the award-winning Wickham Sound. If I say to you drones, then the first thing that probably springs to your mind uh, would be Gatwick being shut and Heathrow having scares and all that sort of things because people were flying drones uh, where they shouldn't have been is basically what it comes down to. And I suspect that Steve Groves is going to say that um, it's giving the respectable ones a bad name. Would that be right, Steve? That would be absolutely correct. Thank you for having me on today. You do fly drones for a living. I do, yes. I'm a registered drone pilot, registered with the CAA. So uh, whenever I fly drones, I do so uh, in a way that uh, is going to be safe and going to be in accordance with the law, which obviously these people... Yeah, uh, there's a big difference between what you do and what they were doing, because they obviously weren't. Exactly, yes. Because anybody can buy a drone. Yes, anyone can go out and buy a drone, and there's a bit of a common misconception that you need a licence in order to fly a drone, and, well, technically you don't. Anyone can go out and and buy a drone. As long as they're flying it in a way that's in accordance with the law, then they can uh, um, they can fly it and but, there's the sticking point and there, there is a sticking point because people don't know what the laws are and where they are and are not allowed to fly and uh, that's that's how we end up with with situations like this yeah i, I get the feeling that the, those guys if they were guys who shut down Gatwick for two whole days, knew exactly what they were doing. But that's a different issue, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so the sort yes. of drone that sort of um, you can hold in one hand that you can probably get from Argos and places mm. like that, that's a toy. Yes. Your, yours is a professional thing, so um, the same word applies to both, but it's not the same thing, really, is it? Well, in a sort of a roundabout sense, they're the same sort of thing. So a drone is essentially an unmanned aerial vehicle, which usually has sort of four props to give it a good bit of stability in the sky. And uh, the main difference is what you can do with them and the quality of pictures and such that you can get from them. So the ones that we tend to use, they have a gimbaled camera, uh, which is mounted underneath that you can use to get really good quality photos and video. Whereas the ones that you kind of buy from Argos or whatever for, for 20 quid, they might have a little a little camera on there that you can get some fairly low quality pictures out of, but they're not really professional equipment. Yeah. So tell us what you do with it. So we do all kinds of things. Drones are really good for adding a bit of uh, production value to video production. So we are primarily a corporate video production company. But uh, we use drones to add a bit of extra zing to our productions. But there's all sorts of other things you can do with them. For example, uh, if you have a building that you want to have a look at the roof on, so if you think that there might be a leak or something in your roof, um, instead of getting a cherry picker out and, uh, or, or going up on a ladder, which can obviously be quite dangerous, mm. you can uh, zip a drone up there and get some good quality photos of your roof and see where the leak might be. And stand uh, on the ground underneath it looking at what it's seeing. Exactly, yes. Um, you get a live video feed through to the control unit that you have in your hands so you can see what's happening. And obviously you can record video and footage onto an SD card in the drone's camera as well. So mm. you can do all sorts of things with it after that. So when you watch the television, you must see drone shots everywhere. I see them all over the place. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's kind of the new hotness in a way. It's getting to the point now where there's more programs out there that feature some sort of aerial drone footage than ones that don't. And the, the biggest reason for that is in order to get that kind of footage previously, you would need to use a helicopter, yeah. uh, which is obviously quite expensive. £20,000 an hour or something. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Uh, whereas with drones are much cheaper, more convenient, and actually safer as well, provided you use them in the right way. Yeah. So your reaction to that news about Gatwick, mm. when, when you heard that on the, on the radio or saw, saw it on, on the internet, um, you must have thought, your first thought must have been they're using a drone, Mm. And the second thought was probably, uh uh-oh, things are going to get clamped down on. Yes. Well, my first reaction to it was to kind of do a bit of a beleaguered sigh. Oh, Um, no, not again. (laughs) Yes. Essentially, the the people who are doing this sort of thing make people who are using drones in the correct way. um, It makes us look bad in comparison because it means that drones start to be seen as a nuisance rather than the fantastic piece of technology that they are. And people start to focus on the disruption that people can cause with them, rather than the, the, the good things that you can do with them instead. 
Yeah, and maybe a bit of a knee-jerk reaction that people don't see the difference between somebody with a toy one being a nuisance and mm. somebody with a professional one earning a living. Yeah, exactly. And the other issue as well is legislation and uh, how the laws might be tightened up as a result. Yes. Um, because people who were responsible for the disruption at, at, at Gatwick were always going to break the law, regardless of what the regulations say that they should or shouldn't be doing. And the reaction from the legal aspect of it is it would often be a case of, well, you know, we, we need to make the regulations more stringent. Mm. Which is um, going to affect you. Which is going to affect me. And there's, there, there comes a point where, you know, more regulation for drones is actually probably a good thing um, because there's kind of a lack of it at the moment. But it comes to a point where all you're doing is making life harder for the people who are using them responsibly. Is there a way around that? I think really there needs to be more cooperation between the people who run places like Gatwick and law enforcement. They need to look into new technologies and technologies that already exist and implement them in a way that means that drones cannot actually be flown around those areas ah. at all. Or if there are drones around the area, they can be taken down quickly and uh, with a minimum of disruption. Uh, is it possible to do that? Because wh one of the things that all the commentators said on the news during that, that Gatwick thing mm. was that there's no way of stopping it. Well, there are a few different methods that have been developed and, and trialled in various places throughout the world. The most effective one is uh, using geofencing, where built into the software of commercially available drones, you have software geofences set up, so the drone physically won't fly within areas that are designated as no-fly zones. Okay. Um, and those are controlled by the drone manufacturers. Yeah. Um, now, the issue with that is that somebody who builds their own drone in their back garden, which is actually a <laughs> fairly straightforward that, uh, thing to do, aren't going to have that. There are other things as well, so things like using jamming equipment to you know, cause the drone to yeah. lose control and Because crash. they're all radio-controlled from the ground, aren't the, they? They are, yeah, they're all radio-controlled. Um, the issue with that is what frequency do you use? Because commercially available drones use a certain set of frequencies for their communications, but again, somebody building a drone in their back garden can use whatever frequency they like. But there are other more direct methods as well. So the obvious thing is you can potentially shoot a drone out of the sky with uh, with a rifle. That was suggested, whatever, wasn't it? Which yes. was suggested, but there are issues with regards to you know potential collateral damage with that. And, you know, the police don't generally don't like discharging firearms. There are other things as well, though. So there is a solution which involves having an interceptor drone with a net launcher, which essentially oh, flies okay. above the offending drone and drops a net on it with weights that will uh, force it to land. So it's effectively a police drone with Eff a blue flashing light. Effectively a police drone. And perhaps my, my favourite one is there is a group who are training birds of prey to hunt drones. <laughs> Um, and they, uh, I, I'm not joking, and uh, they, they... Oh, I love it. They, 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 they're trained in a way to approach the drone from underneath so that they don't get hurt by the props, yeah. uh, grab it in their talons and literally wrestle the thing down to the ground. Oh, goodness. Which I think is fantastic. As wonderfully poetic as well, isn't it, that the high technology gets taken down by an animal that has been trained to do it. Absolutely. Uh, that, that's lovely. It, it's basically, it's the technology leaving behind the usage or inventing these things and then finding out what can be done with it. Yes, um, that's kind of what's Much happened. like the internet, really, I suppose. Yeah, much, much like the internet. Um, it's very much a case, and, and this is an issue with the legal side of it as well, because the technology has improved at a substantial rate of knots over the last few years in terms of the, the sort of things you can do with them now and the, the kind of ridiculously sophisticated technology they have in them. And the trouble is, because technology is moving forward incredibly quickly, the legal side of things is very slow to catch up. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the things that I think that should be put in place is um, actual registration of drones. And Similar. licensing maybe for flying them as well. Yeah, exactly. Basically putting some sort of accountability into place. Yeah. Yeah. If the technology is advancing that fast, is the, the legislation and the, uh, the reaction to it always going to be playing catch up? In a sense, yeah. Ultimately, the core technology, the ability to fly drones and to get hold of them cheaply enough that anybody can go out and you know drop a couple of grand on on a piece of actually professional equipment, is is now there, and that's that that's the main bit. So now, if the law manages to catch up with that bit, everything else is going to be kind of ancillary. 
uh, okay. uh, yeah. improvements so to that technology. A development of the basic idea. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So your company, Take One TV, Wickham-based. Yes. And uh, do you find yourself flying over Wickham? Wickham's actually quite picturesque from the air. Is it? it? Oh, good. Yeah, with the, with the nice rolling hills and, and all that stuff. Um, but there are quite strict regulations with regards to where we can and cannot fly. The biggest one, obviously, is Booker Airfield. You're not yeah. allowed to fly within a kilometre of any aerodrome, which includes Booker. And also, you're not allowed to fly within 50 metres of any property that you do not have direct control over. That, so That's a bit all-encompassing, isn't it? It is, yeah. So if you need to fly somewhere, then you need to have written consent from the owners of any property in the area um, that, yes, it's okay for you to yeah. fly over their yeah. property. Basically. So if you want to um, um, take a shot of my street... And you're going over my back garden to do it. Mm -hmm. You've got to ask first. I've got to ask you, and I've got to ask your everybody else and, in the street, and possibly everyone else in the street. Yeah. It sounds like there's a lot of legislation already there. It's just that there isn't really a means of enforcing it to the people who are likely to be ignoring it. That is exactly the issue. There are regulations in place, and they are in place to ensure that people who are conducting themselves in accordance with the law are doing so with kind of a standard of safety and competence. But people who are going to break the law are always going to break the law regardless of what rules there are in place and it's it's that enforcement side of things that needs to be improved yeah maybe it takes something like shutting down gatwick to get something to happen well i can only hope i mean we've had a major incident now yeah the lives of hundreds of thousands possibly even millions of people were affected by that and the government now has to look at ways of enforcing the laws that are in place and maybe tweaking the ones that, that are and kind of improving them in certain ways to me to kind of prevent that sort of thing from happening again. And the government is a little bit preoccupied at the moment, so I don't think it's going just to be happening any time yes. in the next couple of just months, a, is it? Just a bit, yeah. Yeah. So the, the from the legitimate side then if we can call you that, the, the authorised side, mm. uh, drones are here to stay. I'd like to hope so. The danger, from my perspective, is that the government can potentially see one idiot who, yeah. could, who can get That's hold of a drone thing. can disrupt the lives of hundreds of thousands of people and shut down one of the busiest airports in the world with minimal risk of repercussions on their part. And there's a risk that the government will look at that and say, OK, if you can't play nice, we'll take everyone's toys away. And yeah. people, the only people who will be allowed to use drones will be people who are involved in you know, law enforcement and yeah. sort of military. Ban the lot of them. Stuff. The government wouldn't do that, in, would well, they? Would they? <laughs> yeah. we, so this, this, is the, this is the worry. So uh, the, the onus is really on people like myself, people who are operating responsibly and within the bounds of the law to reassure people that drones do have positive uses and they, they don't have to be this hideous nuisance that you know hits the headlines yeah. there's two sides to it there, there is yes. there's um the bit that we all see even if we don't know that we're that's what we're seeing mm. uh, and there's the nuisances and the two mustn't be confused exactly yeah your chance to give us a quick plug for your drone services Steve. okay so i work for take one business communications we're a corporate video production company we're based in high wickham round by the huendon area we do promos case studies and testimonials and that's kind of our uh, our bread and butter as it were um, but we obviously also do aerial photography and aerial video capture and stuff as well and uh, if you're interested in having some video made for your business then uh, have a look at our website which is www.takeonetv.com and give us a call i will confess and due disclosure, I have personal experience of Take One TV, and they're thoroughly <laughs> recommended. Uh, on done several of their finished videos feature a possibly familiar voice. That's all <laughs> I'm going to say. Uh, Steve Groves from Take One TV, thanks for joining us. This thanks morning. for having me. Love music, love talk, love Wickham Sound.